And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome to Your Prayer Intentions. We're delighted to spend the next half hour with some interviews, with some prayers, and with some thoughts. But mostly, we're very happy to pray for your prayer intentions. Uh, we have a pretty good-sized list of intentions, both from the prayer wall and from online, so we're going to go after them right away. Let's begin with our standing intentions. We have the standing intentions for the parishes who are listening to the show and the parishes in the area that we cover. We have the standing intention for WQPH and its supporters. And a reminder that if you wish to be a supporter of WQPH uh, financially, you can go to the WQPH website at wqphradio.org and click on the donate button for any amount because that helps pay the bills around here and helps us bring you great shows like this one that you're listening to right now, Your Prayer Intentions, uh, shows like First Do No Harm with Dr. Mark Rollo on Sundays at 11 a.m. and p.m., uh, From the Housetops also on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. with Brother Matthew and Brother Anthony from the Slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Uh, we also have, of course, Talk Catholic at 12.30 today right after our show and the 13th Apostle, which comes before our show. So all of these shows you will help support by donating to WQPH. And if you're not in a position to donate, these are hard times with the COVID stuff and the shutdowns, we very much welcome your prayers because after all, if we didn't believe in prayer, we would not be having a show called Your Prayer Intentions. We also have the standing requests for the uh, Intentions of the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia. We have the standing request for Lucy. We have a standing request for Mary Lotz. And some requests from the prayer wall, both from this week and last week. So let's get to the prayer requests on the prayer wall. And just a reminder, if you want to put up prayer requests on the prayer wall, just go to wqphradio.org, click on prayer wall, or, or if you want the straight address, wqphradio.org slash prayer wall. Put your prayers up there, and not only will we pray for them on the air, but other people can pray for them as they see them and believe prayers, and you can see what prayers are left for you. Okay, we have a prayer request for Chris and his wife. They have financial issues. We have a prayer for Mary. Mary's been to the ER twice this week, so a prayer there. We have a prayer for Eddie and his family. They're dealing with an emergency. We have a prayer request for the whistleblowers going under oath to protect the integrity of our election. We have a prayer request for a man with knee problems. He'll be having surgery in February and missing three months of work, which is always a problem. We have a prayer request for Philip. Philip has an operation scheduled. We have a prayer request for the soul of Mary Margaret Rogers and her family. Mary Margaret's a devout Catholic. I know the family very well. They're fine people. And Mary Margaret, or Mama, as she's known, her loss will be keenly felt from the people who know her. We also want to do a prayer request for all those who have not been able to have regular funerals, because that is a very, very hard thing. Closure is important, and of course, a Catholic Mass is important. A prayer request for two couples who are both a discerning engagement. Now some requests online. A uh, request for Mrs. Rays, who went to the ER earlier this week. Well, is going to the ER as I record the show, but by the time you hear it, it will be earlier this week. So we have a private prayer request. No details at all, just a prayer request from Dan, a private prayer request. And I do want to point out that if you have a prayer request that you send us either via the prayer wall at wqphradio.org or by email at wqph893 at comcast.net. That's wqph893 at comcast.net. Or even if you just see me at Adoration or something, uh, or drop it off at the radio station. If you want your prayer request to be anonymous, that's fine. You can give as little or as much information as you want. God knows what's in our hearts. We have a prayer request for Appalachia. We have a prayer request from Mary. Uh, two of her friends had mothers who passed away unexpectedly. And let's just check one last thing to see if there's anything new. We have a prayer request for Justin. 
Justin is going to the specialist because of a problem. And I'd like to add a prayer request for appreciation to all that God has done for me and for help in resisting sin because as we as has often been said we don't save ourselves and it's with God's help that we are able to resist sin and we're going to make our prayer requests so our prayers are going to be the fifth sorrowful mystery today the fifth sorrowful mystery and we will pray that prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen the fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion. We offer the Lord Jesus this 15th decade in honor of crucifixion and ignominious death on Calvary. And we ask of thee through this mystery and through the intercession of thy Holy Mother, perseverance of the just, relief of souls in purgatory, and conversion of sinners. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now unto the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now unto the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now unto the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now unto the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the crucifixion come down into our souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, of course, a special prayer for those who uh, did not get a chance to pray for, to get their prayer requests in. And we pray the uh, prayer of St. Michael for those intentions, along with the Holy Father and the Pope Emeritus' intentions. As we pray, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we also now have an interview this week, 
And our interview this week is with Virginia Leto, part one of two parts, about her children's book, Finding Patience. So now, Virginia Leto, and we talk about her book, Finding Patience. Hello and welcome to another edition of our interviews with Catholic authors. And today, I am with Virginia Leto, who is a professor of theology in Maine. The name of the college again? St. Joseph's College of Maine. St. Joseph's College of Maine. And she has her first book out. And, you know, you think about a college theology professor, you're thinking we might have a very serious book on the sacraments or a very serious book on a prayer like Hail Mary like my own book. But instead we have a children's book called Finding Patience, Adventures of Faith, Hope, and Charity. So Virginia, you've been a you know, professor of theology. You're well-versed in theology. Why a children's book? That's a very interesting question. When I was graduating with my master's degree in 2014, my world consisted of all of these great theology professors that I was dealing with. They all had doctorates. They were all writing these great theological tomes. They were using these great big words that you had to go look up. And I really didn't have the confidence at the time to come out into the world doing what they did. I felt like there was still, even though with a master's degree, I had so much more to learn. But I thought, maybe I can write for children because I can write in simplistic terms that they can understand. And then that's where this book came from. And of course, if you want to teach theology, if you want to, if you want to talk to theologians, those big words are very necessary. But if you want to teach the faith, the first place to teach the faith is to the children because they're the ones who need to get it early and retain it. Exactly. So I can write to adults on my website about virtue, but then I can write in books to children, and that's my way to evangelize to children is through the books. Okay, before we get to the book, you mentioned your, your website. Do you write about theology on your website? Do you blog about that sort of thing as well? I blog about any kind of virtue that we have. I have a whole slew of them listed by category on my website. And then I also write about saints and spirituality. And I write about great books that I've read that have virtue content in them that act as great examples for those that follow me on my website and are looking for that kind of information. Okay, we're going to plug that website first and then we're going to dive into the book. What's that website where we can find all this good blogging? Because I'm a blogger as well. It's VirginiaLito.com. Okay. And for those paying attention at home, that's V-I-R-G-I-N-I-A-L-I-E-T-O.com. So now that we've taken care of the blogging and the big theology, now this, now the book Finding Patience, Adventures of Faith, Hope, and Charity. This is a children, this is a very nicely illustrated children's book about three sisters, I believe. Yes, it is. Three sisters named Faith, Hope, and Charity. And they find themselves in a new location. Their parents have just moved, I understand. Daddy got a new job and that meant moving to a new town. So that means a new house, new school, new friends. And That is a standard of a lot of children's stories and like. But it, for kids, it is a big deal. Or maybe these days with electronic communications, not as bad because you can still get a hold of old friends a little bit, but to actually be with people, to see with people, to try and fit in with a new group of people is a huge traumatic thing for kids. Yes, it is, and so that's why I wanted to address it. Now, where did the book come to you? Again, you ta we talked about the theological virtues and you're writing about big issues. Where did the idea of the children's book itself come? Actually, it came from adoration one day when I was sitting there and I figured, well, if I'm going to write to children, I need to write something that I know about. And so what should I write about? And I write from experience. And the idea of these three sisters and what they were going through, I could, I could write that. And it, I can relate to the characters that are in this story as well, especially Faith. And why especially Faith? Well, because she felt like somewhat of an outsider when she's coming into a new school. She's eight years old, so she's in second grade. And no one will talk to her. No one's paying attention to her. They're all getting together and they all know each other already and everybody's ignoring her. And I can relate to that because that was what it was like for me as a child. So you draw from experience when you do your writing. 
So Faith enters this new school, and of course she wants to meet other people. She wants to get, you know, you want everyone wants to belong. Kids very much constantly want to belong. So what is the virtue that she is trying to learn here? Well, the virtue that she needs to learn is patience, that God will bring her good friends in the right time when is she needs it. And of course, it's important to get the right friends too, because a Sometimes, what is the old saying? There, are, there's more lamentations for answered prayers than unanswered ones because you'll you'll ask for something and you don't know what you're asking for. So it's a question of finding the person you want to find or the person you need to find. But she also learns in this book that she needs to trust God, that God will bring her the friends when it's the right time. And so she she you can see it through the story. It goes over a four day period, and in the first day she comes home in a crying fit. And she just wants to move back to her old town where she can be with her old friends. The second day, she comes home and she just sulks. The third day, she comes home and she decides that she's going to just play with her sisters and try to get along. And that night, they get a puppy. Well, that just warms her heart. She feels now that she has a friend. She has the puppy. She goes to school the next day, and that's where she meets the friend that God brings to her. But she doesn't meet that friend until she's standing in line to get her lunch. And this rude boy cuts in front of her and gives her the raspberries. And then she says, eh, that's okay, I can wait. And she realizes, ah, I've got patience. And she's so thankful that she has gotten the virtue that she asked for and prayed for. Walks out of the lunchroom into the cafeteria and she's looking for a place to sit and that's where a little girl walks up to her and asks her to eat lunch and she says hi my name's Faith what's yours and the new girl says my name is Patience uh, that is very very cute and Patience is a, of the virtues if, they have, if we had to name a virtue that is most needed in 21st century America especially among the young it's patience because people just in this electronic world they're in a hurry they have to if a, if news is if you heard of something an hour after somebody else you're behind the times you have to have the latest thing you have to have the latest iPhone you have to have you have to have now 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 constantly senses 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 and patience is something that people just they don't even consider it anymore it seems right it's almost as if self gratification has become the vice and the patience is the virtue that offsets that vice. And so that's another reason why I wanted to write this book, because I wanted for kids to see that some things, good things, really, truly good things, are worth waiting for. Now, I'm going to dive into a little bit of your theology degree here. And isn't this something that's talked about in Scripture a lot? I mean, we see uh, Elijah at the cave waiting for God. We see, the, you know, the famines and such, and Christ, you know, over and over, people being, you know, persevere, have patience, be ready for God. And it's something that the saints have talked about over the years. Well, look at how the Israelites had to wait 40 years before they were going to see the promised land. That took a lot of patience and in turn, a lot of trust in God when he didn't deliver right away when they wanted it. And that's really the other virtue that patience is is connected to the idea that you can trust God the idea that God will provide in the time so give us this day our daily bread exactly exactly couldn't have said it better I should have let you say it then since I'm interviewing you and that was Virginia Leto her book is Finding Patience and we'll be having the second part of that interview next week now I want to talk about a couple of things before we get to our final prayers uh, the first, of course, is this is the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, one of the biggest miracles, if not the biggest miracle, on the North American continent, which uh, caused the evangelization of literally millions and of, of basically a continent. Nothing, nothing brought Christianity to the continent more than the apparition of Our Lady in Guadalupe, which still draws millions and millions of people to this shrine every year and it's really it's one of the great miracles 
and it's a great feast. It's, sometimes I think about this and the devotion of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and it's one of the side effects of a large population that's come from um, Central America and South America has been the devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe, which has become very big. And that is a, that's one of the very positive side effects of this. Because regardless of how secular our culture becomes, the reality of God in general and things like Our Lady of Guadalupe continue to push back. And speaking of realities, I want to point out something, and we've, t we've talked about this before, and it's a subject I, I want to touch on very briefly. We say a lot of prayers here, and we make a lot of petitions of God. And, of course, we remember that God isn't our man. He isn't our servant. He, we're, not, we're not reciting a magic spell to make things happen. And sometimes you think about the best prayers that there are to pray. Now, one of the prayers I do on a regular basis is I offer my pain and suffering for, of the day for the person who's going to die that day, who is in most danger of hell. And one of the other things that I've just started doing, and I think it's a good prayer request, a good prayer intention to start including with our regular prayers, is a request for God to lead me and to lead us and events into the direction that will lead to the most possible souls saved and the fewest possible souls damned. Because oftentimes we will ask for something. Oh, I'd like our kids to get married here. I want this grandchild. I want this job. I want this thing. I want these things to happen. And as we ask for these things, do we think... Will this bring us closer to God? Will this bring that person closer to God? Or will this person harm their salvation? And that's where all the marbles are. So it's something to keep in mind. To pray for the result. Even if we're praying, if it's not the result we were hoping for. The result that is most likely to get us or the people we're praying for the heaven. Or the least likely to get us damned. Something to think about. And now we're going to do our closing prayer. And I want to offer this for conversions because believe it or not, that's the standing intention I forgot earlier in the show, which is our most requested prayer. So we're going to offer our closing prayer for conversions and all the conversions that we've been asked to pray for. We're going to pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit, upon this radio station, upon our listeners, and upon all those places that are carrying the show, to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds, so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make this prayer through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we pray it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for another edition of Your Prayer Intentions. I hope very much that the Christmas season has been treating you well, and I hope that it continues to treat you well. Because Christmas, regardless of the times we're in, is always a time of joy, and always a time to remember that God became man, to save us from ourselves because God loves us and went through all that we went through to show that love. Well, until next time, this is Peter and Jimmy saying goodbye and God bless for your prayer intentions. Bye, all. This is Peter and Jimmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at comcast.net let me repeat that it's wqph893 at comcast.net 
and we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.